In this psychology revision video, we're going to review early brain development from paper one, topic three, development. When it comes to this topic, what we need to know are some early brain areas and their function. We need to know the difference between nature and nurture. We need to know how nature can impact the development of the brain. And we need to know how nurture can impact the development of the brain. And when it comes to this nature and nurture um, discussion, we need to have a bit of a conclusion to this nature and nurture debate. So let's get straight to it. What we need to know when it comes to the brain are some very key areas that tend to develop quite early on uh, for a child. And firstly, those are the key lobes. This links quite nicely with topic seven as well. So we'll just run through the key lobes. So you have the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe and the temporal lobe. But the areas that you're more likely to get questioned on in this part of the exam are the cerebellum, the brainstem, deep in the middle of the brain, the thalamus, and the outer layer of the brain known as the cortex. So the four key areas at the end there, we just need to know what they do. Um, so to cover you for that one, we have the brainstem, the brainstem controls all basic autonomic functions. So again, that links really nicely in with topic seven, autonomic meaning vital involuntary functions that happen automatically. Things like breathing, heart rate and blood pressure. OK, they keep us alive. Really useful, really important. Um, the thalamus is really important for this part of the exam. Uh, deep in the centre of the brain, it processes all sensations and sends them on to the correct area to then be processed. So if you think about topic two, perception, all the sensations come into the brain. OK, it's then the thalamus that then diverts them to another part of the brain to be uh, for the process of perception to start. The cerebellum at the back bottom of the brain, which coordinates our balance and our cortex. That's that thin outer layer. And this is where all of our thinking happens. Usually these come up as sort of like a one mark question. So it's worth just knowing quickly what they do, although it could be possible that they come up in a larger question and you need to show an understanding of what these brain areas do or their function is. Okay, the next thing you need to know about early brain development is the difference between nature and nurture. And nature is things that are passed on to us from our parents in our genes, things that are innate. And nurture uh, relates to things in the environment and in our upbringing that affect us. Now, basically in psychology and all sciences, there is a large debate between nature and nurture. And that debate is which one impacts us the most, which one makes us who we are. Are we born a certain way or do we develop a certain way based on our upbringing and the things that happen in our environment? Well, this part of the topic is no different. We need to know which one affects the brain the most. So, for example, are we born with an intelligent brain or do we have to work really hard to become intelligent? Now, there's evidence for both sides of this, and we just need to be able to run through them and be able to talk about them if it comes up in the exam. So the nature debate. Um, the nature debate is supported by research into twins. So we have monozygotic and dizygotic twins, so identical and non-identical twins. Now, the thing about identical twins is they have exactly the same genes. So psychologists have been researching them for a very long time. And basically, the idea behind researching them is this. If identical twins have the same characteristic, this suggests that the characteristic came from their nature. So because they've got exactly the same genes, exactly the same DNA, if they both do something, OK, we strongly believe that that comes from their DNA and therefore it's part of their nature. And then the argument continues. If one of the twins has a certain characteristic and the other one doesn't, then the argument is that this must have come through nurture, through experience and through a different upbringing uh, and you know, doing different things as they grow up. Um, and that's basically the nature argument. And through lots of research on twins, um, what we have learnt is research and evidence does show that monozygotic twins have a very similar IQ, that's intelligence score, which is suggesting us that intelligence could uh, come from our nature. People are born 
with intelligence um, or or born without it, I suppose. Um, so this is a, a good argument for the nature debate. And this shows us that nature can affect how your brain develops. On the other side, we have the nurture debate. Um, now, nurture is the argument that things in your upbringing and things in your environment have a big impact on you and, in this topic, your brain. Now, lots of things within the environment can have a negative impact on the brain uh, when the child is in the womb. So we have drinking alcohol, smoking, taking drugs and infection. Each of these are things that are not part of nature. They are things put in from the environment into the mother's body, um, except for infection. That's not normally done on purpose, but they can all have a negative impact on the baby's brain. Um, However, there is a way that we can use the environment and our nurture to our advantage, and that is through talking to the baby whilst it's in the womb. And there is evidence that talking to the babies uh, whilst it's in the womb can do two things. It can increase and stimulate brain growth, but also it can uh, help the baby to recognise voices from the minute that it is born. Now, in terms of having a good example for the exam, a nice one is just to talk about smoking, and that is... Smoking is not part of nature, therefore it's part of nurture, and mothers who smoke have um, smaller babies with smaller brains as the nicotine slows down the brain growth. So as we can see, um, there's a lot of negative ways to impact the development of a brain um, of a baby. What's all of this for? Well, it's potentially for something a bit of a harder question, a bit like this. Explain the roles nature and nurture might have in the early development of the brain. Quite a big question and actually quite easy though when you break it down. It was a five mark question and the five things that we've got to do um, are listed on the screen now. So we need to explain what nature means. We need to give an example of how nature might impact brain development. So talk about research into twins quickly and what we've learned from that. Then we need to explain what nurture means. So we need to give an example of how nurture might impact the brain. So maybe linking to smoking. And then we put a little conclusion about brain development of uh, and the link between nature and nurture. And ultimately that is that both nature and nurture play a huge role in the development of the brain. And we don't really know which one is more important. If you wanna have a go, you can pause the video now, that question, but I'm now gonna bring up a good answer to this question. Okay, so a good answer to the question would go something like this. Um, nature refers to the idea that development is genetically influenced. So we start with a definition. Then we put an example. Evidence that early brain development is affected by nature comes from twin studies that have found that monozygotic twins, who share exactly the same genes, have very similar IQs. And then we do the same for nurture. Definition, example. Nurture refers to the idea that development is influenced by the environment. There is scientific evidence to suggest early development of the brain can be affected by the environment in the womb and things the mother does do affect this, such as smoking, which prevents brain growth. Then a quick conclusion to show that they're both important. In conclusion, it can be argued that the brain is a product of both genes and the environment, and it is very difficult to say which has more of an effect. And that basically comes to the end of this short video on things we need to know about the brain, early development, and nature and nurture. So we've summarised um, the key areas of the brain that develop quite early on, the nature-nurture debate, how they each impact the brain, and that quick conclusion.